Hello, yeah. everyone. You are watching one uh, new episode of Coaching Club Talks. Uh, today with me is uh, my guest, uh, Dunja. Dunja he, uh, has a background in HR training, development, but she's also a coach, psychotherapist. And I think it's enough for me to talk about Dunja. So welcome, Dunja. Please introduce yourself. Hi, Adriana. Uh, nice to be here today with you and greetings for everyone who are who will watch us uh, and watch this video. Uh, thank you for invitation, first of all. Um, and as you said, I would like to introduce myself, uh, first of all, as a psychologist, because this is my uh, main education. I have finished a master's studies in psychology, but I'm also a psychotherapist. I am a licensed psychotherapist to have a national certificate here in Serbia and modality in which uh, I mainly work is uh, REBT uh, psychotherapy. And uh, for um, most of my professional life or all of my professional life, which is uh, nine years uh, uh, today, not today, this year, actually, I have been working in the field of HR. Uh, and um, for this in actually uh, same company. So it is experienced in one company, IT company. Uh, and uh, throughout my, I would say, um, development, professional development uh, within uh, the HR field, I was working, of course, at first after, when you shortly after studies begin uh, as an HR generalist, and then how I was growing and developing myself um, I was finding out uh, throughout my position that um, uh, development of employees is something that I'm most interested in. Uh, so I was working as a HR business partner and also um, uh, and in the last uh, few years as um, uh, uh, in the area of learning and development in the last year as a learning and development specialist. And so basically this is shortly. Uh, thank you, Dunja. So, uh, with respect of your education in, in coaching and uh, you, you being a coach, uh, can you answer for, for the, this first question, how do you see coaching? Maybe uh, the most simple definition, how would you explain coaching to your grandmother, for example? <laughs> That's a nice, uh, I'm always smiling at, at that question uh, because um, for me, um, I like metaphors, first of all. So um, I like to represent uh, some um, terms in terms of metaphor. And for me, uh, I like, first of all, the one metaphor uh, with uh, uh, representing coaching as um, a driver or a, a cab driver or a coachman, because actually we are here as coaches to support the clients or coaches in their journey from where they are to where they want to be. Uh, that metaphor I really like. And beside that, um, I was uh, recently uh, reading uh, one book, uh, Coaching Plain and Simple. And there was a very nice metaphor that I liked very much in comparing uh, coaching um, as, uh, let's say, uh, making a frame, frame for a picture. Because it was listed there, a um, very nice perspective of uh, Rembrandt, who said that for him, it was more harder to find the proper frame for his picture than to paint the picture itself. And in that matter, that the framing is itself uh, an art. And in that context of coaching and making a frame of a picture, we as the coaches are actually helping the coaches who are a picture itself, so already possess everything. Uh, resources, strengths, uh, abilities, we are just making, we are helping them to make this frame uh, and this frame would actually enable them to shine or express themselves in a po full potential. So this metaphor I really like. I don't know whether my grandma would understand it, <laughs> but I hope so. Yeah, that was the great answer. I really, really like that about the frame. So uh, if, if we continue in, in the same direction, Maybe you could use some metaphor for it, but uh, how you, you would explain why somebody should uh, uh, hire a coach? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, um, I think the past year and a half <laughs> is shown all to us, you know, with this whole pandemic and everything that, uh, yeah, uh, really all of us can uh, um, 
face some situations in life when they can feel stuck or when they are not sure how to move forward or actually um, how to reach their full potential, what is actually some, sometimes maybe lack of motivation during the pressure and everything. So I think in this, um, in, in this direction, uh, hiring a coach could be very beneficial uh, for a person to, let's say, work uh, and to um, uh, investigate more deeper and with help of a coach, let's say, enable uh, his full potential and development because I think the development is um, a lifelong process. So in terms, uh, if you are, um, let's say, thinking of yourself, not within the company to hire a coach, but within the companies, I think um, it's very beneficial to use coaching as a tool. So um, for uh, people who are working in the companies, whether they are HR, uh, HR or HR business partners, or they are managers or leaders, it is so useful to have these coaching skills and tools because it really helps people to be present, to be aware, and to really give a support uh, to the employees and looking at the employee as a whole person. On the other hand, uh, also uh, hiring an external coach um, within the company, it's also very, very beneficial because it brings a fresh perspective. Sometimes we are stuck because we are for a long time also the HR department, the managers, the employees, you know, you are within this culture, within this uh, uh, repetitive style of behavior and so on. And sometimes you can miss uh, this fresh perspective that the external coach can bring. And of course, again, with the knowledge and tools and skill set, uh, how to help um, a client and bring a fresh perspective. I think this is very beneficial. Mm -hmm. Great. As you mentioned that and mentioned that uh, year in a half, which was challenging for all of us, also for employees and employers, uh, which I see on the internet is mentioned more and more, is that mental well-being. So mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me more, some, maybe some examples or your opinion on, on that uh, mental well-being, taking care for employees and how uh, coaching fits in, in that concept? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's, that's a also a very good question because we can see also from the uh, social media, also from LinkedIn, uh, and also I think uh, based on the experience that I had working also in the company, but also within the uh, people with whom I have been talking. Yes, this previous year really did show how important um, well-being of employees is uh, and the mental health generally. Uh, and uh, why is it important for companies to um, take care and to support employees in that direction? In, in which terms? It actually to enable people to be open to speak about uh, their emotions, to speak about uh, how they feel, some uncertainties, the pressure, the stress they are feeling. Of course, the whole um, way of working, which was now um, for most of the people uh, working from home mm -hmm. and balancing between different roles, your professional role, your parent role, because for most yeah. of the people, yeah, it was the working also aside with kids. So a lot of, uh, really a lot of challenges. Yes. And then, yes. So, um, yeah, really, um, I think it's, it's very important how coaching can help. Co coaching is, of course, not the only way of a support that you can uh, give uh, to your, if we are now talking about the business environment. So um, what we have seen is actually that organizations are searching and offering for their employees support in terms of um, employee assistance programs, such as uh, so a psychotherapy support uh, from a, a certified psychotherapist or counselors, but how also coaching can help. Yes, it can, because um, as I would say, um, it is able then to um, offer a coaching services, but in the area of uh, employee well-being. So. 
for us as a coach is also to be aware that there is um, growth of a whole new area uh, where of need, let's say, um, where we can um, use our coaching skills and that is mental well-being and, um, and, and that area, of course. Uh, but also for the um, employers to be aware that not only talking about performance, leadership is something that is important but looking at the person as a whole and in that uh, in that sense um uh well-being coaching would cover topics such as stress maybe lack of mot motivation uh how to reach the balance between those goals uh, these uh, roles that i mentioned and so on so that topics which we would normally not think of or exclude if you're only focused on performance but again motivation or lack of motivation or uh, sometimes insecurity or lack of purpose at the end they are all connected also to a performance yes yeah. Thank you. So now, now I feel as all my questions are connected in some way, because uh, as we were preparing for this interview, we touched it a little bit, but I, I just wanted uh, to, to ask you about that uh, distinctions Mm -hmm. of between coaching and psychotherapy Be, because uh, ICF is taking care and emphasize so much that uh, ethical practice and taking mm -hmm. care about those distinctions when I uh, uh, taken my uh, CKA test uh, for ICF accreditation mm -hmm. there, there, there were some questions as uh, if your client talks about suicide or, or talks about uh, uh, uh consuming alcohol too much or something mm -hmm. like that uh, uh, would you call a police would you uh, what would you tell to him if he calls you uh, late at night or something like that so uh, i have several questions uh, in in, in mm -hmm. that field but uh, <laughs> first is how you as psychotherapists are uh, changing hats and and those roles mm -hmm. Well, that's, um, that's a good one very much because it's not uh, always for people easy to make a distinction uh, which, uh, uh, let's say, issue or a challenge that client brings is for psychotherapy and for coaching. Well, the, the main uh, distinction is that the psychotherapist is a person or professional who is uh, educated in the area of mental health, so has um, um, required knowledge uh, and education in, and is a professional for um, uh, mental health. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at the ICF definition of coaching and the uh, core competencies, uh, education in mental health and these competencies are not listed. So uh, yeah, coaches are not so if we look at the ICF definition of coaching are not experts for mental health and within that line sometimes uh, yeah it can happen that your client brings some challenges or some difficulties which are touching the domain of mental health and then it's um, I would say red line as you said if client is talking about maybe some suicidal thoughts which is really extreme or is experiencing, I would say, the example of very high level of anxiety, which is um, negative but dysfunctional uh, emotion. Uh, and in terms, um, uh, let's say, um, what is the, the main thing is if you are noticing that uh, your client is facing with some challenges that are enabling him or her uh, to um, perform regularly in everyday activities. So the client is dysfunctional in everyday activities, either personal uh, or in a professional area of life, then that would be the signal to uh, recontract with the client and to um, talk about referring client to a different sort of a so support, such as psychotherapy or uh, counseling. So that can be, so um, we can say the mental health, it's not uh, uh, because th there were a lot of critics of a medical model of mental health, which means either you are, that you are mental healthy if you do not suffer from some mental disorder, but we now know that mental health is more a dimension, a continuum, 
So it means on one uh, end of this continuum, yeah, it's uh, when you're uh, extremely suffering and you have a mental illness. And on the other hand is um, uh, this end when you are mentally healthy. But yes, of course, between that is a whole continuum. So yes, all of us, as I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, can sometimes experience either anxiety or high level of stress and so on. But how to know whether this can be, uh, these uh, difficulties can be uh, treated through coaching or can be, uh, let's say, um, refer to a psychotherapy of the, or coaching, as I said, the first of all is, uh, is client able to function in the everyday uh, functioning? Also, does cl if client has, for example, a problems with eating, so basic needs, sleeping, and so on, this would be also a signal to talk about referral. If these very strong emotions uh, that client is saying, because sometimes clients do say that they are depressed, but they are really uh, experiencing sorrow, which is uh, a, a healthy emotion. So, but if these unhealthy negative emotions that are dysfunctional uh, are present for um, a longer period of time, so not in hours or in days, but we are talking in weeks, if they are with high intensity and frequent, these are also the indicators that you should think about referring the client. And also another indicator would be if you see that uh, you are not reaching progress with the client. And also another thing is if we are talking about ethical guidance from the ICF perspective and um, core competencies, one of them is also to be self-aware. So if you are experiencing yeah. Yeah. this feeling of yourself, of anxiety, that you are not sure what to do with this client, you think it's too much for you, it's out of scope of your expertise or your competences, and that would definitely be the case, not to immediately refer this person, but to contact your mentor to seek for a support. Uh, it's always good to have in your line of network also a someone who is from this other supportive professional like counselors and therapy so you can contact um, some of your colleagues and ask for opinion so definitely being aware uh, tracking the progress uh, being aware of your own emotions and um, taking care of some of those red red light signals I would say yeah and there is always that core competency direct communication so you should tell it to, to, to a client and refer it to, to some yes. other profession. Yes, yes. In, in line of yeah, what ICF also recommends is then recontracting. So yes. uh, let's yeah. say uh, defining again, what is the goal, um, how, help the client to uh, make this transition, to see the benefits, uh, search for a support, that everything can be done also throughout the coaching and throughout this process, uh, for example, of, of referral. And I think you asked a very, uh, very important question because for people who are coaches and do not have a psychological education, for example, this can be something that they're sometimes really scared of or yeah. worried about. And there is really very nice white paper that I find it out in the ICF client referral. And I recommend uh, for the people who are not sure, who are insecure, it's really very informative uh, um, material to read. For those gray zones. Yes, for those gray zones, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Thank you. We, we covered so many important topics in, in this short conversation. So uh, I, I, I have one final question for you, mm -hmm. and it is how do you see future of coaching? Oh, I see it right. <laughs> yeah, I do really, because I think, um, yeah, you know, um, the crisis is a chance for development, that, that famous uh, sentence uh, that, yeah, sometimes it doesn't sound so good or it makes us even frustrated when we do not feel that we are coping very well. But I think that really this whole situation of um, um, coronavirus is really show how important is uh, the role of, let's say, coaching taking care also of employees of if we are talking in a uh, um, environment. environment yes also taking care of ourselves 
uh, how important it is to um, ask for help um, and also ask for help in um, terms of remembering uh, about our own strengths that we sometimes do tend to forget when uh, times get rough. And also, so I'm seeing um, a really bright future in terms of that more, and I'm seeing it already in Serbia, that more and more companies are really taking care, uh, being flexible um, in this um, situation with pandemic, are uh, hiring external experts, um, let's say um, co coaches, but not only coaches, also, as I mentioned, for employee assistant programs or therapists and counselors. Also, what I have seen at is really, I think, in the past, well, I would say two or three years more intensive that a lot of colleagues from the HR domain in the roles of the HR business partners, for example, are taking trainings yeah. in coaching, yeah. using coaching tools as an internal uh, uh, coaches because you do not sometimes uh yeah it depends uh how it's or organization developed uh, how it's organized and so on so sometimes it is within line of duties of an hr business partner to also be in, an internal coach sometimes it isn't but never mind whether you are going to do it formally throughout the task within your hr business partner role if you do have this nice set of tools and techniques you would yeah. just approach the people with whom you work uh, and use this uh, really nice set of tools of, and techniques which can really be very helpful. Of yeah. course I'm seeing also in the line of the agile environment uh, more and more people who are on the role of a project manager or Agile scrum masters are also seeking education in terms of team coaching which is really mm -hmm. uh, I think great. So all in all we talked about also um, well-being coaching, uh, performance coaching, I think also is uh, there really companies are becoming aware the performance management also, it's not um, one year conversation, it's an ongoing process where you can also use mm -hmm. coaching, not only coaching of course, but coaching as a style of management and leadership can extremely be helpful helpful in this one-on-one -on -one meetings because you're really being present available uh, on this one-on-one -on -one meetings which then enables people to be really open to say what they think and it's also building a trustful uh, culture transparent culture and a culture that we are also feedback driven so yeah great thank you i feel i just uh, have been nodding my head all the time you were speaking thank you thank you very much for this conversation and uh, thank you for your time thank you adriana it's my pleasure i hope the answer were not too long <laughs> thank you for watching uh, this episode of coaching club talks and stay tuned until the the next episode bye